Hello, podcast family. Hope you guys are having a great day. I'm your host, Rocky Rourke, and today we are kicking off a brand new series that dives deep into a topic that's critical but often overlooked, and that is how communication can make or break your freelancing business. Now, originally when I you know, wrote this episode, it was actually one single episode. It wasn't a series, um, and it was honestly very meaty. I think it was over an hour long. So I decided to break it up into six, as of right now, six individual episodes that hopefully will be a whole heck of a lot more manageable. So before we jump in, you know, we try and do uh, hot topics and uh, listeners of the week. So this week's hot topic at the time that I'm recording this uh, last week, uh, Apple just released their brand new Apple iPhone 15. Um, and I was one of the first people to uh, get my pre-order set up. In fact, I actually pre-ordered um, the iPhone 15 Pro Max uh 512 gigabyte uh, phone. And within a few hours of, of pre-ordering it, I ended up canceling. Now, the, the reason why I decided to cancel it was because I didn't really need it. You know, I already have uh, the 14 Pro Max. Um, and honestly, the biggest differences between the two was USB-C cord and a button that you could customize. And that's it didn't really seem that different. Same megapixel camera, same, basically everything. And so I decided, you know what, it is not worth it. You know, so this kind of goes back to a previous episode that we had where we talked about uh, being reactive versus being reflective. The day that I pre-ordered the iPhone, uh, I had uh, a lot, a large lack of sleep. Um, I was up till 4 a.m. the previous night uh, taking care of our, our, uh, uh, son. And so it was very difficult. Uh, I was very tired. So when 8 a.m. rolled around for the pre-order, I was exhausted. And I was just like, you know what? I'm just going to do it. I'm going to be a zombie and just like, you know, get the pre-order going. And then when I woke up after a few more hours, I, I really made that realization. You know, I was able to be more reflective. I was able to think more clearly. And I decided, you know what? I don't need that phone. I don't need to spend $1,500 on a new phone. I can probably, you know, spend that money somewhere that makes more sense, like uh, upgrading our garden or uh, buying something that we need versus something that I wanted in the moment. So I think that's very important um, that we all kind of focus on that. You know, don't just be reactive, be reflective, especially when it comes to uh, something as stupid as a new iPhone. So, uh, yeah. Hopefully that all makes sense. I don't want to just like add that as like a quick hot topic uh, for today's episode. Um, but let's move on to something even more fun. Uh, the listener of the week. So the listener of the week uh, this week actually comes from YouTube. Um, it comes from someone who uh, left a comment on a couple of our videos. And this shout out is for Kyson. I believe I'm saying that correctly. Kyson763 on YouTube. Thank you so much uh, for engaging with our YouTube content. Uh, for those of you who are not yet following us, you can follow me directly at Rocky Rourke. We have decided to switch over to my personal YouTube channel over having a brand new one. I felt like it was a better uh, way of broadening our listen uh, listener range uh, versus just starting a brand new channel. Maybe I was right. Maybe I was wrong. We'll see in the future. But if you would like to uh, become a listener of the week for Design Break Podcast, all you have to do is uh, follow us on Twitter, uh, subscribe to us on YouTube, engage with us, leave comments, retweet, uh, send DMs for uh, any questions that you might have, uh, and just like just talk to us. That's it. We choose one random uh, person that's been engaging with us, and we give them a shout out on the podcast. Um, so yeah, so without further ado, thank you again so much for Kyson for uh, going through and uh, engaging with us on YouTube. Uh, but let's jump back in to today's episode. All right. So basically picture this, you know, you receive uh, an email from a potential client interested in your design services, your fingers hover over your keyboard, the clock is ticking. What you type next could be the difference between landing a lucrative project or facing yet another missed opportunity. It sounds dramatic, doesn't it? 
but that's because it is. This initial exchange is a digital handshake that sets the stage for everything that follows. You know, get it right and you're on the right path to a fruitful collaboration. Get it wrong and you might find yourself in a quagmire of misunderstandings, unmet expectations, or worse, lost trust. So in today's episode, we're going to be breaking down this pivotal moment, dissecting the elements that go into making that all important first impression. You know, we'll talk about how effective initial communication establishes your professionalism, sets clear expectations, and lays the foundation for trust. And believe me, in the freelance world, trust is as good as gold. Trust is what gets you returning clients. It's what gets you referrals from clients. It's what gets you testimonials from clients. So whether you're a seasoned freelancer or just starting on your journey, this episode is designed to help you navigate those crucial first interactions with potential clients. So get ready to reframe how you think about communication and in doing so change the trajectory of your freelance business. So make sure to grab your notepads, grow up, grab your iPhone, hopefully not 15s, uh, and to take some notes on today's episode. So like I said, the initial uh, communication with a potential client is critical. It's a critical moment that often sets the tone for the entire professional relationship that follows. You know, it's akin to a first impression, that first handshake. You know, as the saying goes, you never get a second chance to make a first impression. This initial interaction becomes the foundation upon which the client's perceptions of you, your professionalism, your capabilities are basically built. So here's how the first uh, communication sets the tone in various ways. So number one, you know, we kind of alluded to this establishing professionalism, you know, basically, you know, it says to him, are you a professional or are you a hot mess? So how fast you reply really matters. You know, if you're taking three or four days to respond to initial inquiry, I've been guilty of it. A lot of freelancers have been guilty of it. It's okay. Learn from it, get better about it. But if you're taking so long to respond, then they're going to see that as a weakness that you don't care, that you're not going to care during your project. You know, same time though, if you respond like lip, like super quick, like within a minute of them sending the inquiry, that can also send up some red flags. This person might be, uh, you know, needing business way too much. They might, you know, overcomplicate things. Maybe that's not a right fit for us. So finding that sweet spot, which I usually do the quickest I'll respond to a message is generally uh, 30 minutes to an hour, uh, depending on if it's a referral where someone has introdu introduced me uh, to a potential lead or if they have reached out via my website. Uh, generally, the longest I will go is 24 hours after they send the initial inquiry. And what I'll do is I'll see the email and I will set a reminder, uh, usually 12 hours or so from me seeing that initial email. Uh, to remind me to go and respond to that. Even if it's to say, no, we're not interested, it's very important that you respond quickly. So the other thing too is keep it clear and concise, not an essay or a crazy manifesto. You know, making sure that what you send to them, your response is clear, concise. It includes maybe bullet points for questions that you might have. Um, or it, uh, you know, responds with like these specific, you know, things that you, uh, understand from their initial email or something like that, but don't overly complicate things. Don't send someone something with five or six paragraphs, right? Send something nice, clean, concise, and short. So the bottom line here is show that you're a pro from the get go. You know, clients want someone who makes things easier and not a headache in the making. And that really comes off you know, with how quickly or how long you take to respond, as well as how much information uh, that you share in that initial email. So number two is setting expectations. You know, what is the game plan? You know, be upfront about what you can do, when you can get it done. Establishing your capabilities and timeline very quickly is very important. One thing that I do is I actually have an autoresponder. Uh, for um, anyone who fills out an inquiry on my website. 
to where it sends, uh, they send in an email or they send in a response. And within just seconds, they get a quick like auto response email, lets them know that, hey, this is an auto response. You know, we will get to you in uh, 24 hours or less. Uh, here's our current capabilities. Uh, we currently have a wait time of one month for a project. Um, and our minimum level of engagement is, I can't remember how much it is, like 2,500 bucks or something like that. And so instantly that tells the client how long it's gonna take or how long it's going to take before they get started on a project. And then this is the minimum level engagement. This is, you know, we are not going to take a project that costs any less uh, than $2,500. Now, some people might see that as a negative. I don't see that as a negative at all, because a lot of times the two things that really make or break, whether or not you're going to work with someone is that timeline and especially is that budget. You know, a lot of times clients don't understand how much things cost. And so it's very important that we educate them. And so sometimes I'll, I believe we might even have a PDF attached with that autoresponder that kind of lets them know, like, here's a quick, you know, 10,000 foot view of our capabilities, timelines and price breakdowns. So the other thing is mix matched expectations equal drama. So when you're not on the same page as your client, you will find yourself deep in a hole later on. This is something that a lot of freelancers experience, a lot of agencies and studios experience. You wanna make sure that you're both on the same page right from the get-go, right from those first initial conversations. Because if you're not, then you can really end up uh, in a quagmire, in a hole, or in some sort of quicksand very, very quickly. Uh, so basically the bottom line here is be clear now on the expectations so that you can avoid turning the project into a soap opera later. You know, you don't want that to happen. You don't want to, it to end up like a telenovela, like what my wife is probably currently watching upstairs as I'm recording this. <laughs> you you want to make sure that everything is clear and concise. Number three, building trust and credibility is more important than having a five-star review. You know, making sure that you sound like you know what you're talking about. Don't just BS your way through your first meeting with a client. You know, it's very important that they feel comfortable and they feel like they can trust you and especially trust that you will do the best work for them. That is probably one of the things that I love most about what I do is those initial calls and meetings where I'm able to put clients at ease and I'm able to not only validate, you know, that I'm the right choice for them, but also validate that they're the right choice for me. The potential client, you know, needs to feel like you're not only the right person for the job, but they have to know that they can trust you with the problem that you're going to solve for them. You know, it's very important that they can feel trust, that they can see trust, they can see that you have the capabilities in which that uh, they are looking for. So the bottom line here, trust is a crucial component in any business relationship. And once established, it can make subsequent steps like negotiation and project execution go so much smoother. But if it is lost or if it's not established, most likely you're not even going to get the project to begin with. So it's very important that you focus on trust and credibility. The next thing, number four, is reflect your brand and working style. You know, do the voodoo that you do so well. I love that line. It is one of my favorite movie lines ever from The Warriors. It is so good. And it makes so much sense here. So the way that you present yourself, your work, your capabilities is like a sneak peek for the client into what they can expect from you if they hire you. So, you know, there, there's so many touch points that you can provide from the initial contact uh, a lead makes, you know, all the way to the point where they are making their decision. You know, the way that you respond, the documents that you share, proposals, capabilities, decks, etc. All of these influence the client's perspective of you. Just recently, uh, I went through a major, major update for my marketing and client onboarding materials. I ended up creating, I want to say half a dozen new decks, capabilities decks. Um, some of them are tailored specifically to different industries, different client personas, um, as well as things like onboarding documents, like onboarding new clients. So that way they understand the whole process. They can see like what's left in the in the process, like what they, what we need from them and things like that. 
all of that goes a long way and they really get to see like what they can expect, like the high caliber that those documents are set up. They will expect that high caliber and understand that high caliber will come from you. So basically the bottom line is show them what it'll be like to partner with you on so many levels. If you're disorganized and vague initially, they're going to assume that that's how you're going to handle the project altogether. And you don't want that. You want to provide them with the right amount of information. You want to provide them with the, uh, the right touch points and everything along those lines. So then number five is open the door to relationship building. You know, building bridges is key. You know, we always want return clients. We want clients that are going to refer us to other potential clients. People want to work with freelancers that they like and can easily understand their needs or wants, sometimes before they even know it. Uh, and if you heard in a previous episode, we kind of talk about this exact same thing when it comes to uh, partnering, you know, creating client partners. So the first conversation and the meetings that follow kind of set the stage for not only the first gig, but future ones, and most importantly, possibly referrals and other opportunities. So that initial conversation, those initial conversations, I should say, make it plural, is very important. And it helps to really give the clients an understanding into like the type of freelancer that you are, the type of person that you are. And it really uh, shows them if you're going to be the right partner uh, to work with in the future and for this specific project. So the bottom line here is a solid first impression is not just important for this first opportunity, but an investment in future opportunities. And so we've kind of gone through all five of these here. And like I said, this is part of a series, but let's kind of do a quick recap. So uh, in, you know, the importance of that initial uh, client conversation is establishing professionalism. Number one, number two is set expectations. You know, what's the game plan, right? Number three is building trust and credibility is more important than a five-star review. Number four is reflect your brand and working style. Do the voodoo that you do so well. And number five is open the door to relationship building. Well, and there you basically have it. You know, your comprehensive look at why first impressions with a potential client is more than just a quick exchange. It's the foundation for your professional relationship. It's basically a litmus test for trust and quite frankly, an investment and your freelance future. So the next time that you find yourself uh, drafting the initial email or preparing the first call, pause for a moment, you know, and remember, you know, this is your first act in the relationship that could evolve into a long-term collaboration or even better, a hearty endorsement from a satisfied client. So before, you know, we sign off, you know, if you found value in today's episode, do us a favor, hit that subscribe button, uh, or leave us a review wherever it is that you are listening to this podcast. If you're listening to it on YouTube, you know, please hit that subscribe button, like the video and leave us a comment. Tell us, you know, what you liked about it. If you have any questions uh, about what we discussed in today's episode, you know, your support really helps us uh, to get an idea of what you're looking for and how we're able to help you. You know, if you're listening to the podcast on Apple Podcasts, please definitely subscribe and leave us a review and rating. We really appreciate it. If you would like to become a listener of the week, all you have to do is engage with us. This is on YouTube. It could be through a rating review on Apple Podcasts, or it could be on Twitter at the design break, you know, your support, like I said, it, you know, really helps us to reach more freelancers like you looking to elevate their freelance career. Also, don't forget to check out the show notes down below for any links or other resources that might be valuable to the topic at hand for today. You know, but thank you guys so much for being an amazing audience. And remember, you know, in the world of freelancing, you're not just designing visual websites, you're designing relationships, partnerships, and ultimately your own future. And as always, remember to stay passionate, stay positive, and stay creative. That's it for me today. I hope you guys have a great day. Bye.